Telecom Careers, the number one global telecom and wireless job board. Telecomcareers.com. Hi, everybody. It's Victor Agreta, and this week on Coders, I am joined with Arthur Matosian, and he is here from Fibo. Uh, actually, he's from Los Angeles, but you are one of the co-creators of an app called Fibo. And, of course, we've talked about Fibo before in the past. Uh, it's a video app, and it lets you share video clips. It lets you find video from a bunch of different services online. And if you have something like Netflix or Hulu, it's a really great uh, accessory to those tools because it'll basically search a lot of the other video services like Vimeo and Reddit video, Facebook video, YouTube, lets you find stuff. So we're going to be talking to Arthur a little bit about Fibo and its development and then also talk about something that obviously video watching is made for, which is watching on the TV. And we'll talk a little bit about Apple's new Apple TV that's coming out. So Arthur, thanks for joining us. Uh, Victor, thanks for having me again. So uh, tell me a little bit again. Um, it's It was basically like you and maybe one or two other people who developed Fibo, right? Uh, yeah, it was myself and then uh, Peter, who was our engineer. And uh, which is amazing, really, for the 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 way that it's sort of integrated, the design and everything is fantastic. But you guys have had a feature for a while that actually allows the interface to be shown on an Apple TV. And that's, that's like all the Apple TVs that support AirPlay, right? And that's what you guys were using with, uh, with Fibo before was AirPlay. Uh, well, so yeah, I mean, AirPlay is a pretty standard out of the box uh, thing that Apple offers for developers. But the thing that we use that was a little bit different uh, was we use AirPlay mirroring. So what that does uh, was a feature that Apple came out with where you can mirror your screen of the device uh, on the TV. And then if you, uh, but there's a different type of class you can do where you can actually create a second screen uh, experience. And what that means is that what you're showing on the, on the device isn't necessarily what you're showing on the actual, uh, on the device in the Apple TV, isn't the same thing you're showing on the mobile device. So we created a thing where the interface would show up on the television and the phone itself would be a touch remote. So you had two different things going on, and it created a much better experience from just either airplane videos or from just uh, you know copying copying exactly what was on the phone on the TV, and that was uh, particularly useful for people who wanted to kind of look at the TV and not have to look at the phone and see what they were tapping on uh, by navigating. So, and and I think that's really important for people to understand is that you've you've kind of got three things with AirPlay. You've got just the standard AirPlay, which is if you do YouTube and you see the little video playing up here, and but it says AirPlaying. And it's actually just sending that video. And you actually still have the rest of the interface that's locked in here, so to speak. Then you've got mirroring, which is the usual consumer thing where you go in and you say, okay, mirror this. And then it shows that interface, that YouTube interface, which is optimized for mobile, shows it on the TV, right? But you guys are doing something that developers can do in their apps. They don't have to do it. You know, they could just say, well, you're just going to project the video or you're going to mirror the whole interface the way it is. But you guys are doing the third option, which I think is the one that really takes a little bit more time because you have to say, well, we're going to mirror, but we're actually going to take this interface, project it up here, and possibly change it. So that's what you've done. You've got an interface that's scaled up for a television, and then you've put the remote here on the, on the screen, which I think is, uh, I mean, that's the way that most people should be doing that. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, one of the things that was interesting was when, and we'll get to that a bit later, but Apple announced tvOS. For a second, I'm like, oh, well, all that work and effort the last few years kind of went, went to waste. But I quickly realized that there are a ton of, you know, millions of current generation Apple TV devices that are out there. And Apple is still selling the current generation Apple TV for $69. So, you know, for anybody who has one or wants to get that, um, you know, unit, this interface works really well. Or it works great, actually, on that. So it's, 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 and it's something that developers, particularly game developers, can utilize, uh, you know, obviously video developers. Uh, so it's definitely... Uh, you know, I would say tvOS is important, but I think having an experience for airplay uh, is also going to be a key if you if you really want to you know support all customers that have apple TVs right absolutely and uh, so um, well, one thing I actually I will divert a little bit real quick and talk about you you have been working on a watch OS app, I know, um, but I'm curious if you can give developers any like high level advice for dealing with watch OS because it's really a very different kind of experience, isn't it? Yeah, uh, watchOS, um, well, at first, you know, there was, the apps were kind of an extension of your current, I, you know, iOS app. Uh, they weren't native. And then they changed the SDK and made it native, which was the right decision. And obviously, it helps make apps a lot better. And so, you know, when you're doing that process and trying to figure out what to do, uh, there were, things were changing really fast. 
Uh, and then the other piece that I guess made it more difficult than anything else was one, I mean, we're a video app, so the watch does play video. And, that, and I'm trying to figure out the thing about how people were going to want to watch uh, videos on their wrists. Um, obviously, I thought that they would want to watch shorter form content than even the, the typical short form content out there. Uh, but the, the, from a technical perspective, the challenge was, you know, we integrate with a lot of APIs, as you mentioned earlier. You know, there's YouTube and Google, um, there's Vimeo, there's Facebook, Vine, uh, and on top of that, there's other services that we use like Parse. And a lot of these uh, big companies had yet updated their SDKs to support watchOS. So some of the stuff that we wanted to do wasn't so easy to do out of the box. Uh, you either are waiting for them to create the solution and then update it for everybody, or you have to go on your own and, and figure out some sort of hack to temporarily make it work. Um, and then, you know, it was the, one of the big things when it comes down to developing an app and, you know, just like, and, and the company is figuring out where to focus. And so I quickly realized that I'd rather focus our efforts on the Apple TV um, and then wait a little bit for watch OS and let things mature a bit more. I think that's an important lesson for developers also is understanding um, that sometimes you're going to say, okay, look, I want to use this new thing, but all these other companies, if you're, you know, connecting with APIs on other people's ends, you may have to wait for them to get their stuff together and, and update their things so that you can actually implement that. So that, that's actually a really good bit of information because I think a lot of developers think, oh, I'm just going to jump straight into this. It's like, well, if you're interconnected in any way, you know, I mean, you can be an island, like the carrot apps are a great example. You know, it's a health reminder thing, and it's just its own little thing that lives there. It sits perfectly on the watch, but it's not tied to any other kind of thing. It's not trying to pull in information or data from anywhere else, so that works great. Um, of course, you're a video app, so it makes sense that you would be focusing on the television. So tell us a little bit about your experiences with Apple TV uh, and, and just some things that developers need to be aware of when they're working on that. Um, a great time on the question because last night I was playing with our one of our, our builds that were getting close to shipping and it was a really really exciting but let me kind of I guess I'll go back a little bit when we first started you know again we had the airplay mirroring interface so a lot of things was like okay we have something designed for a TV uh, should we just take that and you know port it over but you know once you really dive into the uh, Apple you know tvOS human interface guidelines you realize that they there's a lot of thoughtful things that they Put out there like the parallax, you know how to how to know when an object is in focus. Um, there's just you know there's so much the scrolling and you know the, obviously the remote was a little bit different. And so again, it was about kind of make the decision of you know doing it right versus just kind of the quick kind of hack to make make it work. And we decided to start from scratch and you know make a dedicated tvOS interface that was very much you know the same vision of what we have currently, but that fit better for what people were going to expect with tvOS. So that was, I guess, decision number one. Um, and then, you know, that's essentially creating a, a new app. And then it was kind of figuring out things that were, what were going to work and what wasn't going to work and kind of getting over a lot of challenges. Um, so what we have today is uh, we, we've solved the issue with our third-party you know, API services. We had a, so far, you know, no one's been able, it's been just about a month that the kit's been available. So, and we were very lucky that Apple sent us one of the earlier uh, developer kits. So I do have the Apple TV now and I absolutely love it. But um, so we started building, you know, basically screen by screen. How is the, how is the first you know, screen going to look? How are they going to navigate? What's that look like? Um, getting the parallax to work was, you know, was a thing, was a fun thing to do. Um, and then after that, you know, getting into each, each screen. But none of that, early on, none of that mattered because none of the APIs were working. So it was essentially we had put in, um, I guess, temporary, like, hard-coded information or videos and uh, uh, logos to just test and so when we, the, it was a little disappointing because the first time we had a build uh, that I tried to load on tvOS, it actually, it, it worked in the simulator just fine, but when I tried to load on the Apple TV, it crashed. And that's when I realized that it was because of the, the uh, servers that we, the API issues we had. So, um, so got all that stuff done, finally got the API stuff working, and I, I've been playing with it, and it's been a lot of fun. And then it's, you know, it's kind of interesting because, you, you know, there's so many things that when you, you think you're ready to go and you're ready to ship, and then you're like, oh, there's this minor little glitch here or, you know, there's like things where the video ads didn't go back to the main list, just kind of stayed there. And there's a scrolling with the remote um, that was a little bit different. So we're now in the, in the testing phase, but I, I'm really, really excited about watching uh, or having FIBO launch for Apple TV and just that experience is going to be really, really nice. So, um, yeah. You know, some people have mentioned uh, from the consumer side anyway, that it's a little, 
nebulous about onboard storage or whatever. I mean, do you think yeah. that's going to be a big deal? I, I just don't, I don't think for most consumers that's going to be a problem. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, from a coding perspective initially, because there were a lot of things that we stored locally, we had to figure out a solution for that. That wasn't difficult, but um, you know, th that's actually a good point as far as like it being so, it being so nebulous. I mean, there's so many things, as you know, that FIBO does, you know, clipping and favoriting and, and, you know, all these different features that really aren't relevant at all in the Apple TV and having, you know, then them remove a lot of things and making it, you know, it honestly simplified the process of development because we were like, okay, well, we don't need to pour over or worry about all these things. And when it comes down to it, especially with our app, you know, at the end of the day, people want to discover great content and then watch it. Um, so getting rid of all the stuff that wasn't necessarily helped us focus a bit more. And so, you know, we, there, you know, there's, again, most of these guys that are developers, they can figure out you know, clever solutions for their problems as far as keeping things, you know, that aren't storing things in the cloud or having things, you know, I mean, I, honestly, it, having t to work with TVOS makes you a better iOS engineer because you're thinking th through things a little bit differently. But I think, you know, again, focusing the, for the experience that you have or that you're trying to create for the TV, you really can get rid of a lot of, the fluff and, and you know fun, get to the core of what you're trying to do get back to that and I think it really will make it a lot more simple well you know something I was thinking about was that uh, I guess you can't really you can't really share on Twitter you know out of the box anyway on Apple TV now we'll see if there's gonna be a Twitter app or Facebook app or whatever but you really aren't signing into those accounts on the Apple TV right so it's not okay. like iOS where you have that built in yeah we have that on our iOS app and um, we decided to for again, API reasons as well as just for simplicity to forego that for V1. I do think in the future, you know, given that I've seen, you know, Apple, the TVOS, there's options to do more. Um, and some of the other apps they had demoed, like MLB had some really cool split screen things going on. So I don't think that it, it's too far fetched in the near future that you would be able to find something you're watching and share it to Twitter from the TV app um, and or browse Twitter or Facebook uh, on the TV. But Again, you know, getting trying to get there early and, and getting there, you know, just kind of waiting for everybody else to catch up with what Apple's built. built um, I think you have to really d define and know what your mission is and what the core focus of your experience is going to be, and, and get that working first. Because at the end of the day, you know, sharing is these are all other things that are, aren't going to be the, the core of the experience. So those can come a bit later. Um, so it's been just been important to focus and, and keep it simple. Well, and I think that also, you know, you've had now the full range of of experience all, you know, all the different devices, right? So I think you're seeing that how Apple focuses on the experience and how that experience is different. It's very different. A uh, watch is different than a TV, is different than a phone, is different than a tablet and a piece and a computer. Uh, so in doing that, you know, you've learned obviously, A, stay focused on the core experience because that has to remain the same throughout each one of those, right? And B, what is it that users really, really want? And so as long as those two things are completely overlapping, right, you're, you're in good. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And you, you, you know, some, if you're a developer as well, if you have lots of analytics, you'll be able to know um, what, you know, people are, are using more than others. And, you know, sharing is tapped, you know, X percent of time. So, you know, I've been thinking about it on the TV, for using the sharing example of how important that really is going to be. Uh, you know, you can wait months and not ship anything um, and hope that these things get developed and then, or just, you know, again, just kind of drill it down to what, what you're trying to do and, and ship. So, Well, and if experience has taught us anything, or at least history of the App Store has taught us anything, it's good to stake a claim early on, um, but don't just do that and then walk away and expect it to be, you know, you come back a generation later and there's oil gushers going on. But right. you've really got to, you've got to till those fields. These are oil fields. These are not oil fields. They're pastoral Absolutely. lands. You have to till the soil, you know. It's like, I keep telling developers, don't just put your app out there and be like, Okay, good luck, you know. Yeah, well, part of it, you know, for us having the app, because, you know, we've been, we've been a, a really long, I guess you can say, public beta, and a lot of it was learning, you know, the market a bit, a bit more and learning, you know, how, what, what our place was going to be or could be uh, and what, what people really wanted and really used. I mean, you have a lot of hypotheses, and then you kind of put things out, test them, and you know, there are things that we've done that no one even noticed or cared about, so the, they don't become a focus. And there are things that I thought were important that uh, – no one thought what else was. And then there's some things that, you know, like the, the Vmoji feature, for example, that seems to be one of the most popular things that people are using in FIBO right now. So I, I knew it would be important, but I, I was, I didn't know how important how, and how fast that was going to happen. So that helps adjust your focus. So I think, you know, getting on there as early as you can for Apple TV, exploring, you know, 
different ideas of is going to be key to success. And even not if, if whatever you're doing, you know, later has nothing to do with what you're doing now. I think the part about learning, um, there's, there's really no time to waste. And it's just, for me, it's just a ton of fun. I mean, I, I was having a lot of fun last night playing with the, you know, with that app. So, um, yeah. That's cool. Uh, so we're going to wrap it up here, but I want to, I want to ask if there's one major thing that you can give uh, one major piece of advice you would give to developers who are thinking about developing for Apple TV. Uh, you know, what would that be? Um, well, for me, the biggest th uh, thing that helped out was actually having the unit to test. So yeah, I know, unfortunately, they didn't have enough devices to get every developer uh, an early unit, but thankfully it's, it's starting to ship this week. So, uh, you know, for me, I, for about a month, I was using an app and then it was working just fine in the simulator. So I thought I was a lot, my progress was a lot further than what it really was. And then when I actually tried to load it on the Apple TV, it crashed. So that kind of sent me back for a quick second. So I think, you know, do as much work as you can. But the most important piece is going to be getting that, you know, ordering an Apple TV, getting it, you know, in, in your hands and uh, testing the, the actual app on the device. Um, sounds simple, right? But, I mean, that really was the biggest thing. So uh, aside from that, I think, uh, you know, making sure that you are aware of the different solutions um, and APIs they're using. And then what, you know, there's not a lot of things out there like for, again, Parse uh, or, or, or for Google. And I know that, you know, there, 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 there are things on GitHub and whatnot that show that they're working on updates. But if you want to get out there right now, you've got to quickly figure out a way to make these things work with uh, REST and, and JSON solutions. So um, but that's, just, again, uh, depends on the type of app you're building. So that's it. And it's also It's also early. You know, that's the other thing too, is that this is like App Store V1, you know? Yeah, even, yeah I mean, again, there's even... Less because it was, you know, the SDK was kind of working with Safari for a while, so people got a bit of a head start. And, um, and this Apple TV thing came about very quickly from announcement to TVOS being available to now it's available for consumers. So I think the launch is going to, I'm excited for the launch, and I think that over the next few months, I'm, I, I'm really excited more so than anything else about how the TVOS App Store pans out. Not just for our app, but uh, there's a ton of, I'm sure there's a lot of fun things I'm going to find out there, so I can't wait to see what, what else comes out. And um, yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going, be really cool. it's going to be, I'm sure, pretty exciting. It's, it's going to be a great, uh, great Christmas season, I think, for a lot of people to see Apple TV. And then, you know, as we always tracked, right after the holidays, people get their new devices and whatnot. And, of course, you have the App Store just go bananas. There's sales and all sorts of other things and whatnot. So it'll be really, I'll be really curious to see in January what apps sort of rise to the top because that's going to be that first real, you know, huge boom i think i don't know it'll, it'll be interesting not that we'll know what sales really do month to month yeah um, but when we hear the new uh although i think they've got an earnings thing um as we're recording this today they're going to do earnings a little bit later today but we'll hopefully hear a little bit of color although apple has been very very careful to not kind of break out some of those numbers people are upset that we're not going to know how many watches were sold unless they're happy with that number and then they'll say hey here's how many we sold but yeah well, yeah, I think, you know, there are a lot of things I can talk about. Numbers are obviously key, especially if you're an investor. But, like, with, I, I think from a, a, the broader perspective with Apple TV is, I mean, Siri on Apple TV is by far my most favorite version of Siri. I, I use it on the phone every now and then, but I, it, it's, it's really easy to say, you know, show me, you know, Pixar movies and show me the best. And it, 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 the unified search with voice, um, they, they, they nailed it. It's awesome, and it makes – the world of difference uh, compared to the old Apple TV. So for that reason alone, I, mean, I think if you're debating on which one to get, I would get that one. Sure. It's been it's been awesome, and I think that's going to be not only just for what to find, but even like weather. I mean, the simple things that you think about when you're just kind of sitting on the couch, um, Siri. It just changes the way you use Siri, and I, I think that it's going to be the most impressive part of this new device. Excellent. Well, another reason <laughs> never to turn off my television, I guess. <laughs> right. It's funny. Awesome. Well, Arthur, thanks for joining us. Um, everybody, you, you can check out his app, Phoebo, at it's P-H-E-E-B-O.com, or just look on the App Store. You can find it on there. And very soon, coming to an Apple TV, a new Apple TV uh, near you. So, Arthur from L.A., thanks for joining us, man. Thank you. And uh, we will see you guys on Coders next week. Coders is a production of RCR TV News. To reach Victor Agreta Jr. or to suggest a show topic for coders, you can reach him on Twitter at SuperPixels. For all the latest news on wireless code and the whole world of wireless, check out rcrwireless.com.